Hey there, Mr. Maestas here, and in this video I will be going over solving a system of equations using what we call an augmented matrix. And sometimes we call this Gauss-Jordan, some books call it the Gauss-Jordan method or row reduction method. Uh, but basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a, a matrix, and we're going to be using the matrix and doing a series of row reductions to get our uh, solution to a system of equations. So, so let's go ahead and take a look. So here are some rules, though, that you need to follow when doing uh, Gauss-Jordan elimination, okay? We're going to be able to replace ro rows, and you'll see what I mean by that in a second. We're going to replace rows by, one, adding or subtracting entire rows. So we're going to add or subtract entire rows from each other. We can multiply or divide an entire row, or we can do a combination of the two at one shot. One thing we cannot do, please do not do this. You cannot add or subtract a single number into an entire row, okay? So you can't take a five and add it to everything in a row and say, oh yeah, I'm just gonna add everything in that row and then I'm gonna get the answer. That doesn't work, okay? Don't do it, please don't do it. Do not add a number into a row. See what I mean in just a second. All right, so what is an augmented matrix? So we've got this, uh, C the system of equations. I'm only going to do a two, uh, two equations, but you can do this with three equations. Some teachers um, like you to do this with three equations and three unknowns. If you do, it's just a matter of, of uh, making sure you add, you're going to do more work. That's pretty much it. Okay, follow the rules and you'll be okay. So let's take a look at a couple of these here. Um, this is a system of equations, and I've got my coefficients. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put these coefficients into a matrix. And this matrix is uh, A, B, so this is my X and Y, and then this is my answer for the to what it's equal to. And then my uh, X and Y coefficients here, and this is what this is equal to here. So this is called, this right here, this is called an augmented matrix. I know it sounds like a, a weird name for just taking coefficients and putting it into a matrix, but that's what it's called. So we're taking our system of equations and we're putting it into a matrix. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a series of row operations to get our matrix to be this matrix here, which is an identity matrix on this side, and it's going to be equal to our values of our x and y to our solution here. So we're going to want a 1 here, a 0, a 0, and a 1. And what I recommend, and, and, and this is just a recommendation, but you can go at it any way you want, but... This is a, probably a step-by-step -step recommendation. You want to do this first. Okay, so this is your first goal is to get this a 1. And then your second is to get this a 0. So this is your next step is try to get this to be a 0. And then you want to make this a 1. So this will be your third step. And then your fourth step will be here, making this a 0. So you're going to kind of go, you know, this way. You're going to start here, then this way, then go this way. Okay? And then by that time, by, by doing that, you should have your X and Y. All right, so uh, I'll come right back and we'll do, I'll be flying here. <laughs> we'll do a, I'll do an example and then we'll do a practice problem, okay? So we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back here with my example. This is a system of equations and I'm going to use an augmented matrix to uh, and some row reduction to solve this. Now, before I do that, I do want to tell you guys um, this method does take long. This the method does take longer than solving a system of equations using elimination um, or substitution. But it's good to know this method because you're probably going to end up needing it. So that's why I'm doing the video. Okay. So here you go. Um, oh, by the way, this is very easily done in the calculator using an augmented matrix. So um, I'll have another video on how you can. The calculator to solve this. So we're going to make this into an augmented matrix. So I'm going to go ahead and change it to my augmented matrix. I'm going to put 4, negative 3, 5, 2. And I like to put a little dashed line. Some teachers don't do that, but um, I like to put the dash just to know that that's my, my, equal, my equal sign. All right, so what we're going to do is do a, a system of um, a series of row reductions using the row, the row rules that I had talked about before. So our first goal here is to make this right here a 1. The easiest way to do that is to take this and subtract it by row 2. And just so I can keep 
uh, keep a, a tab of what I'm doing, I'm going to write down a little bit of notation right on the side to let me know what I'm doing each turn. So uh, what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to take row 1 and I'm going to subtract row, row 2. Okay, so that's R1 minus R2. So let's do that. And so when I do that, I'm going to get 4 minus 5. Okay, and I'm taking and I'm, I'm replacing, I'm going to replace row 1 with row 1 minus row 2. Okay, so I'm going to take uh, 4 minus 5. That's going to give me negative 1. Negative 3 minus 2 negative 5, and negative 17 minus a negative 4. I swear, this fly is buzzing around me. You're going to see me do this a whole bunch of times. It means nothing to the problem. It's just a fly. Negative 17 minus 4, um, negative 17 minus a minus 4, because we're subtracting, right? We're going to have negative 13, and we're going to leave the bottom the same. Now, uh, just because I think it's, it's simple to do this, we're just going to go ahead and change all the signs here. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. So all I did really is I multiplied row 1 by negative 1. So it's one of the rules we can do. So now I've got my 1 here. Great. What do I want to do next? I want to make this 5 a 0. So the easiest way to think about this is what do I do to this 1 to make this 5 a 0? And most likely, almost all the time, you're going to multiply this row, row 1, by whatever this number is here and subtract those two. So what I'm doing is I'm going to replace row 2 by multiplying. So I'm going to take row 2 and I'm going to subtract by 5 times row 1, right? Because I'm going to multiply this by 5 and then I'm going to subtract it. So what I like to do is I like to write my numbers down. So I'm going to multiply this row 1 by 5. So I'm going, to, I'm going to put a negative 5 here, a negative 25 here, and a negative, uh, what's that, 65 here. Okay? So that way, I know exactly what I'm subtracting and what I'm keeping. I'm keeping the big numbers, uh, but these, just, these are kind of just like placeholders so I know what, I'm, what, what math I'm doing. Okay, so um, let's let's go ahead and get our next step here. And I have a big board here because we're going to need the space, All right? So I'm going to take and I'm going to leave the top row alone. So 1, 5, 13. And then I'm going to take and take 5 minus 5, which is 0. So I'm going to replace that row 2 with that. 2 minus 25 negative 23, okay, that's what I'm putting in my new row, and then negative 4 minus 65 is negative 69, okay? All right, so now that I've done that, my next goal is to make this a 1. Almost always, if you've done this correctly, all you're going to have to do is divide by whatever you see there, okay? We're going to divide this whole row by whatever number is there. So in this case, negative 23. So we're going to take and divide. So we're going to take row 2, and we're going to replace it with row 2 divided by negative 23. So I'm going to write that over here, down here. So we're going to keep row 1, 1, 5, 13, and we're going to replace row 2 after dividing by negative 23. So we got 0, 1, and 3. Almost done, guys. Now all we have to do is take 5 and change that to a 0. Again, just like we did over here, we're going to multiply the bottom row by whatever this number is, which in this case is 5, and we're going to subtract the rows because see if we do 1 minus 0, we're just going to stick with the 1, right? So I'm going to take, and I'm going to take row 1 and replace it with row 1 minus 5 times row 2. Now, don't get confused because I multiplied the same number here. It's not always going to work out that way. It's just a 5 because this one right here is a 5, and I want to eliminate that, okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my little numbers here, okay? Negative 5, negative 13. Again, the reason I have a negative here is because I'm going to subtract. I want to make sure I do, 
I can track correctly. So my last part here, I'm going to have 1 minus 0, which is 1. I'm going to keep the bottom row the same. I'll go ahead and write that out. Bottom row the same. 5 minus 5, 0. I've got my 0 there. That's what I wanted. 13 minus 13. Uh, why did I put 13? I meant 3. Let me fix that up. Okay. So, um, oh, it's 5 times. <laughs> Negative 15. Oh, something was, there's a vowel. Okay, negative 15 there. So I'm going to go 13 minus 15, which is negative 2. And negative 2 goes there because I'm replacing it. So my answer here is negative 2, comma 3. All right? I know that seems kind of long and tedious for something that should take you sooner, but, you know, it's, it's a method that you should know, and so that's why I'm going over it. Uh, so I'll go over one more practice problem. If you want to stick around and watch that, uh, it'll be pretty quick. So, uh, but that's otherwise that's how you do row reduction and Gauss door elimination. Thanks. All right, Mr. Myers is back here with your practice problem. So I'm just going to go and crank through this real quick, and you can check to see if you got it right. So you should pause it right now. Let's go. Okay, so I'm going to have four, negative seven, negative sixty-three. 3, 2, and 18. Now, I recommend that if you can do this quicker and not have to write your row reduction things here, you should do that, okay? Uh, for this one, I'm going to subtract row 1 minus row 2. So I'm going to get 4 minus 3, which is 1, 7 minus 2, which is negative 9, negative 63 minus 18, which is negative 6, 7, 81. Okay, now I got 3, 2, and 18 here. All right now I want to take and get this to be a 0. So in order to get that to be a 0, I need to multiply the top one by 3 and then subtract. Okay, so row 2 is row 2 minus 3, row 1. I'm going to get negative 3 here, negative 27 here, and positive. Okay, so this was a positive 27, so this should actually be 29 here, All right, positive 29. And then I'm going to take and divide this by 29, so that way I can get, um, I can remove this and make that a 1. All right, so I'll bring it down here. So I have uh, 1, negative 9, negative 81, and then this is going to be 0, 1. And 261 divided by 29 is 9. Then I want to get this to be a 0. To get this to be a 0, I'm going to multiply this whole row by 9 and then subtract it. So I'm going to write that middle guys down here, 9 and uh, 81. And we have uh, 0, 1, 9. And then on the top, I'll have 1 and then the 9 and the 9 here, 9, 9, 9, 9. Um, it's going to be 0, negative 9 minus 9, or negative 9 plus 9. And then negative 81 and positive 81 make 0 as well. So our answer to this is going to be 0, comma 9. Okay? So hope you got that. All right. That's it for me and Augmented Matrices. I'm out.